Well, YouTube, at the risk of uh, sounding like I'm self-aggrandizing, there's my big word for the day, thought I'd do a quick little walk around of my ever-shrinking driveway that I need to uh, <laughs> definitely make bigger of all the uh, equipment I've been purchasing and such over the past uh, couple of years since I've gone totally out on my own as far as landscaping and whatnot. So, number one, out here in the middle of the road, you can't quite get all in frame, the uh, 2014, now just approaching 77,000 miles on it, still no issues, with its own refueling station now. Um, moving over here, we have Kubota L4330 with glide shift transmission, designated by the GST on the fender there. Around about 973 hours, point two, on it. This is a 2003 machine I picked up used, obviously. It was owned by a gentleman who bought it brand new and had only used it to bush hog his field with, and that was it. I've uh, added a Land Pride grapple and a Franz Guard log winch to the back to make it sort of a uh, tree removal machine. It just came with a loader and the factory bucket, factory bucket having hardly any wear on it. Also added these Trig, I believe that's how I pronounce it, in third Norwegian, I believe. Chains to the back tires for a little extra grip, especially in the past couple of winters. I've been nothing but ice, show, ice sheets. Uh, main reason why I got this is, A, it was a pretty good deal, very clean used machine, and pre-emissions, so, and it was way more affordable than, like, a base, uh, what I was looking at was a L4701 Kubota, because while I am a deer machine, I like having a tractor that's metal and gear drive, and in this size range of 40-ish horsepower, deer only offers plastic and hydrostatic, and I wasn't a fan either. But, as far as price point of uh, 4701, this came in well under, and it's also a Grand L, so you get tilt steering wheel, better seat with armrests that reclines, and a rubber floor. And I think a few other things too, but those are the most notable, I think, features. So there is that. Moving on, we have the John Deere 35G Excavator. I've already done a brief walk around video of this guy, but. So far, still doing well, up to, I think, right around 410 hours on this I have now. Bought the Kubota, actually, uh, by the way, with like 730-ish or something. So I've put around, around, what would that be, 220 hours on it or so? So, anywho, John Deere, I've since gotten a frost ripping tooth for it and a brush rake to aid in tree cleanup and whatnot because the... Seems like the majority of the work that I do these days is just cleaning up blowdowns and neatening up people's woods. Seems to be the uh, predominant <laughs> source of income for me these days. Other source of income that didn't pan out this year was this snowplow. <laughs> As you can see from the state of the ground, there is no, uh, no snow. I think I used this seven times, all told, but... It was a fairly good deal. It was a uh, year-end leftover. They'd use it around the dealership who sells these. Use it around the lot as a lot plow. And so it came in that sizable discount. I had them add the uh, snow deflector on there. Otherwise, it's out as it came. Barely anywhere on the cutting edge. Still barely wear any <laughs> on the cutting edge from lack of use. But I really love the LED headlights on this. And the stainless well... I don't really know that there's any real practical advantage to it. It just looks so nice. I couldn't I couldn't pass it up. So nine foot two. Goes well with the nine foot straight blade, just in case I need a backup. I got off Facebook last year, year and a half. With the big gummy headlights that are pretty meh in comparison to that thing. And to put this snowplow on is this. 2019 Ram 3500, wanted to get 5500, but that wasn't quite in the cards, so here's what I got. I think it'll do me just fine for at least few, at least few years, I would hope. In Patriot Blue, which is almost, if we can get them right side by side, it's almost the same color blue. Apparently they don't make that blue. No, don't focus on the finger, focus on the truck. That blue anymore, so... 
we go with what we got. It was, it was sitting here on the dealer a lot, and it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't a 5500, but it was blue, had the Asian trans, had vinyl seats, rubber floor, and a shifter knob for the four-wheel drive that you just pull back, no button thing. So, it was going, eh, this has got basically everything I want, so screw it. What's another payment? Also has Uconnect 5.0, which I don't mind that little screen anymore. I don't need the screen that comes all the way down to here. It it's, it's, doesn't. For a work truck, I don't need that. That's perfectly fine with me. I know some will complain because, oh, I want the huge screen. I don't, no, I don't need that. This is, this is totally fine with me. I want a work truck, albeit a very dirty work truck, because while the ground is frozen this morning, it's been nothing but a mud shit show for weeks and weeks and basically all winter. Speaking of shit shows, if you guys, whoever who are watching this video, if anybody watches this video, ever go in for a body, if you buy a bear cabin chassis, be very sure as to who you're actually using for an upfitter because this was a complete nightmare. This is body number two that is on this truck. The first one was about six inches too short. They had all kinds of things screwed up from the fuse underneath the hood to run the hydraulic pump to the vent cap wasn't installed on the hydraulic reservoir for the dump. I wanted them to extend that. That wasn't done. It, it, the list goes on and on. I could make an entire video, but it would just be me grumbling and so who wants to listen to that crap? At any rate, this is the proper body for this truck now. Iroquois, I think it's a nine and a half foot bed. Um, I do like that on the old body, it, these uh, slots for the sideboards only came to about the top of that first board, whereas this goes all the way up the headboard. Much more better. In addition to the headboard, the uh, overhang for over the cab actually goes a little bit further than the other body. So, once again, good. I like that. More protection. Um, and also, on the truck, while we're speaking about that, I put these Hercules Avalanche. Yeah, Avalanche. I haven't tried these before, but if you're looking for a cheap-ish snow tire, they're studded as well for plowing. Oh my god, these are insane. The amount of traction that they provide. And like I said, with it being just ice, that's the reason for the change in the tractor, these were invaluable. So I've still got the factory tires, so I just picked up another set of rims on eBay to put those on, so I've got summer and winter set of tires. So make life a little bit easier and not be roasting those and, and point in fact it's illegal for me to be running these after april i think tax day something around there so i need to get these off sooner than later anyway and also given the ground there's no point in my having studded snows so there we go and to move all this stuff around i've got this sure track 14k tilt deck i am in love with tilt decks now i don't know why i didn't think about these before well i didn't have a trailer or a need for a trailer before so there we go it is a 16 foot deck plus four foot of stationary platform. It is infinitely nicer than trying to flip up ramps and flip down ramps and have them kick up on you when you're trying to unload and all that nonsense. The one thing I do need to get, as you can see from the tile chains and binders I've got sitting there, because I'm about to move the tractor in a minute, I need to get a box on front here to put all the said chains and binders in to store them. Yeah, this is very nice i love it low low loading height and you just drive on the only thing that's not the greatest for is if i were to ever go get like a bunch of pallets of something and set them on the trailer and then go to unload because trying to get you can't just drive up the ramps to get pallet forks and these stuff and offload it so i mean there are some downsides to a tilt deck but in my mind the benefits far outweigh the negatives um, and as we come over here, we got this guy who picked up two week and a half ago. We need a wood chipper. This one just happened to be sort of the right place, right time type of a deal. I'm not at all a brand loyalist when it comes to wood chippers, although I was sort of more leaning towards a more bark if I were to get anything. Just from a more, I don't know, book learning type of a scenario. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really know how to articulate that, but... Um, just the the features and the way in which they're built they seemed like the superior machine but i've used this for about five hours on it now and it's 
if basically if you can fit it in the hole it's chipping it so hey is a 1999 vermeer b c935 with auto feed two mm -hmm. has a 50 horse perkins diesel so it's got the biggest power plant that was offered on this chipper a few things i need to still address um, the brakes being one of them, one of the main ones, they're not working right now. Lights work, brakes don't, and you can feel it when you go to stop. So that's something that needs to be addressed. Um, I already did something like the pre-cleaner there was all smashed in and looked like hell. So I replaced that and a couple of little odds and ends put on that new uh, breakaway. I love these breakaway things. So that way you can just hook them right onto the safety chain loops because apparently, don't quote me on this, but I Apparently, the way that so many guys I see where they run them into the safety chain is a no-no. They need to be separately attached to the vehicle, not integrated into the safety chain itself. You can't just hook it onto the safety chain and hook the safety chain onto the truck. That's not DOT legal. So, anywho. But, yeah, this is, uh, this is I think, going to work out well for the time being. Obviously, it's only a 9-inch. So, not the hugest thing in the world. I was hoping for more like a 12-inch, but finances couldn't really allow for something like that. And also, trying to find a used chipper around here. For some reason, it's nigh impossible, it seems. Anybody who's got anything used, they want like $40,000 still for it, even though it's got like 5,000 hours and it's all beat to hell. This one has 900 original hours. Or 900 and... Yes, 906 and a half. So I think, uh, and tin work all looked good. It's not rusted out, so I think it's going to be a good enough thing. And as you can see from over here, I've got the lawn mowing set up also in blue. I'm trying to, there's there's, this, there's sort of a theme going. This, it's just a jumble of crap all locked up at the moment anyway with extra wall security trying to keep it so that nobody can back in and just arbitrarily hook on and go real quick. Um, Nitro trailer is a... I think 14 feet long, I believe. It's six and a half feet wide. I tried to get narrower just because of the driveways I encounter are pretty narrow. And so while a seven or eight foot wide would be mint as far as interior space and having enough room to sneak around the side of mowers, this one is already kind of pushing it as far as width wise and size wise and all. Uh, where was I going with that? I don't know, having a brain fog. Um, <laughs> This is, this is a great video. I'm sure this is going to get plenty of dislikes. Anywho, stain, uh, full uh, aluminum frame, aluminum body. So tried to do the buy once, cry once thing of just buy it once and have it, which is what I try to do with most things. Try being the uh, <laughs> optimal word there. But I'm not going to try to get in there right now because it's, like I said, just a jump. I basically put everything that's summer use inside that for winter storage, essentially. So it's... It's a nightmare. So we're not looking at that at the moment. But anyway, that's uh, essentially what I got. Uh, not trying to brag. It just uh, more or less actually more documenting it for myself at the moment. So I can see, just in case, you know, everything goes tits up with the coronavirus and we're all going to go bankrupt and payments go unpaid and Repo Man shows up. Hopefully not, but you never know the way things are going. I feel like I should go take out stock and Charmin and Scott's toilet paper. I don't get the toilet paper thing, but lo and behold, went to the grocery store yesterday. Yeah, it's bare. I don't get it, but whatever. People are weird. Anywho, on that note, time to end. Ground's frozen. I gotta go get some work done before everything turns mud. Thanks for watching.